going on, you guys? It's your boy, Alex West Collects here, bringing you another figure review. And today we're taking a look at the McFarlane DC Multiverse Batman figures based on the new Flash movie. So we have both versions here of Michael Keaton from his debut in that film. On the left, we have the mask version. And on the right, we have the gold label collection, the unmasked version. This is exclusive to Target. Uh, you will see the accessories they come with are the same. You both, uh, both figures come with a set of fisted hands. You get the grappling gun as well as the battering. Uh, I know we're probably going to get an 89 Keaton version. Obviously, this uh, suit is a little different. You will see the belt is painted black as well as the armor seems to have some different variations from the 89 suit itself. I know there's a rumor that uh, the 89 Batman is coming with a Batmobile and a gold label collection. I will buy the hell out of that. I was so excited to get these. Uh, I actually pre-ordered them from Amazon, Target, and GameStop. And I was like, whoever... Ship some first, gets my money. I'll cancel the other pre-orders. So these came from Target fairly soon. I actually had the uh, Batmobile pre-order on Amazon. For some reason, when they went up for pre-order on Target, the Batmobile was $80, um, which I pre-ordered. I was like, damn, $80, bucks. all right. And then I saw it was $60 most other places, and I canceled it from Target, only to see later they adjusted the price down to $60. So uh, I don't have my Batmobile yet. Hopefully that will be shipping from Amazon this week, and I am excited to see how this figure will pair with it. I have no idea where I'm going to display it because it is massive. Uh, but take a look at these figures in hand here. They do look great. Uh, we're going to get into the Michael Keaton scan. and a lot of people have a lot of comments on that. But take a look at the figures in the box. You will see uh, the side here with the Batman multiverse, the Flash. Flipping all the way to the other side. Got the Batman nameplates. On the back, there is some different variations. So here, uh, I believe this is the Keaton one uh, with the unmasked. Uh, and this is the standard version here. But anyways, let's come back and get these figures both out of the box and see what they're all about. So I did want to go through the accessories real quick. And both figures come with the same exact accessories. So you do get the standard DC uh, multiverse stand here, which I love that McFarlane is giving you these for a, uh, an adult collector. These are a huge plus on your display shelf. You get a set of fisted hands here. Hopefully we can catch it on camera. Some nice sculpting to it. Uh, and as well as a set of open hands. This looks to be more of like a, a, a trigger hand, I guess, for the grappling gun. Uh, I will say, when I was kind of playing around with it, it doesn't fit super great in hand. Not bad, but I don't know. I just feel like it, it could have a better, tighter hold on there. Uh, but we'll take a look at that grappling gun in just a second. And you also do get kind of a, a battering hand, I guess. Sits kind of nicely in there. Uh, but these actually look pretty good. They are really, uh, you know, identical to what it was in the 89 film. They're just painted silver. Got some nice detail into it. Same with the grappling gun. Nice detail into that as well. Again, just painted in silver. Really do like these, these accessories here. If I could just get the camera to focus a little for you guys. Sorry, it's a little tough. They're a little small. Uh, but all in all, they do look really nice in hand. All right, so we're going to start off with the gold label unmasked uh, Michael Keaton Batman here from McFarlane. You can see the likeness here. I know a lot of people don't like this head scan. I feel like I can definitely see a decent likeness to Michael Keaton. It's not the best, but looks, listen, this is a $20 figure. I think for $20, bucks, man, this is pretty good. Could it be better? Of course it could, but I do see a little bit of the likeness. You got the trademark kind of like curls to the Keaton hair, so I do like how that came out. I love the uh, the Batman logo here. Very iconic to me as a you know a, an early uh, 80s kid. This was my wheelhouse. The 89 Batman is still my favorite Batman. So I'm super pumped to have Michael Keaton come back and re reprise his role. Uh, you will see the nice armor detail here on his suit. Looks really good. He's got the black belt here. Uh, I guess this is uh, accurate to the movie. Again, this is not the 89 suit. I know a lot of people are getting a little confused. It is definitely similar. Um, you'll see the actual designs on the boots. It's kind of got some like dirt or weathering to it. It's kind of like a, I want to say like a greenish kind of goldish fade, like kind of worn. Looks like he's been doing some battle. His boots are a little damaged. Take a look at the bag, kind of continues on there here. Uh, you uh, also do get the kind of um, designs on his gauntlets here. Looks really good. I like it. And more importantly than anything, a cloth cape, man. Like that puts this figure over the top. Like, I, I cherry-picked the McFarlane line, to be honest. I don't buy a lot of their figures. Uh, they just do so many ob obscure Batman figures. Um, but, you know, I, I grab a few here and there. I did get the most recent Dark Knight figure, uh, as well as a few others. And I love those figures, but they have those rubber capes. And I, they don't look bad, but something about a cloth cape, man, to me, really puts a figure over the top. And again, this is a $20 figure. Like, they really got uh, a lot done here. I feel it looks freaking awesome. The cape does drape really nicely. You can see how wide it gets. 
And if you guys had the San Diego Comic Con, or excuse me, New York Comic Con, a uh, year two Batman, I did not like that cape. I just felt it was too thick and bulky. Uh, this just seems to be just right for this figure. It's, it drapes really nicely. It's not heavy. Um, it's got some nice movement to it. If you want to see him kind of just like, just looks really nice. Um, as far as articulation, he does kind of have a butterfly joint here. Do you get the double jointed elbows? I would like to see them go toward the pinless elbows. I feel like obviously that would probably um, be something down the road, but that's kind of where all the toy lines are going. That's something I would love to see with McFarlane. You get the kind of diaphragm joint up here. Um, you get a little swivel at the waist. His head rotates all the way around. Uh, kicks, not too bad. You get a good range of motion here. Um, not too much back. Uh, you do get the full splits here. So McFarlane, again, this is a $20 action figure. I don't know how them, they've been able to maintain this price in this economy. But all in all, this figure looks great. Great articulation. I really do uh, like it a lot. Next up, we have the standard masked version of the Michael Keaton Batman from the Flash movie. And this looks great. Again, I know a lot of people are saying the head scan was not Michael Keaton-esque. But this looks pretty good if you ask me. Again, uh, I just think for the price that you're paying, like, obviously, like... You know, some import lines for $60 don't even have a great likeness to the head skin. So I'm okay with it. I think it looks great. I think the suit looks great. Uh, you will notice the cowl has a different kind of sculpt over that piece. Uh, if you do remember the the gold label version, which we just looked at, there was kind of more of like a V taper here. This cowl goes fully over it. The cape looks freaking awesome. And the rest of the suit is exactly the same. Same belt, um, same gauntlets, same armor, same weathering on the boots. So really, it's just the head and kind of the, the neck area that is different. But man, this looks so good. I will say I kind of wish this cowl was a little, maybe a little bigger to kind of go over the cape here. But it doesn't look bad. Um, and I'm curious to see how this is going to fit in the Batmobile. I know uh, the canopy kind of was closing over the ears. You kind of got to tuck it in. I wonder if it's an easy thing to do. Like I said, I have no idea where I'm going to display it. I feel like I have to get some wall shelves and just kind of put like my 89 stuff because uh, I do have quite a few between the NECA and actually the new Mezco but if you want to run through a quick comparison how these look out of the box again you will see the neck piece here is different but the rest of the figures are exactly the same I really like both these I feel like they look so sick and again if you are a fan of the 89 Batman uh, how could you not be excited for Michael Keaton reprising his role and these figures are really gonna just bring that nostalgia factor to life and real quick, here is a quick close-up of both head scans. You can see, again, the likeness isn't perfect, but I do still feel like there's a good likeness to Michael Keane on both these head sculpts. Moving on to a few comparisons. So here we have a few different on-screen Batman figures made by McFarlane. On the left, we have the Batman from the Rob Pattinson series here. Uh, looks really good. Obviously, you can see a little more size to this figure versus the Keaton figures that we got from McFarlane here. And on the right, we have the Christian Bale Batman from the Dark Knight Rises uh, series and franchise. So all in all, it looks pretty good. I, I hope we actually do get a Val Kilmer. And hell, I would even buy a George Clooney Batman. I absolutely love uh, all the cinematic movie Batman figures that we've been getting. And I hope we continue to get more from McFarlane. For your next set of comparisons, so on the left, we have a NECA Christopher Reeves Superman. And you can see how much taller the McFarlane figures are. They are definitely a, a taller scale than NECA. Uh, but again, based on the 80s nostalgia, I feel this would be good to kind of give you an idea how they kind of stack up next to each other. On the right here... We have Alfred from the 1989 Batman movie. Again, a lot smaller of a scale with that figure versus uh, the McFarlane, but definitely uh, do pair well together. And for some more Keaton Batman comparisons, so we have on the left, yes, this is the infamous three-year wait of the Mezco 112 1989 Batman. I honestly don't like that figure too much. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep it in my collection, to be honest. There was a lot of gripes with that figure. I was going to do a review on it, but honestly, I just felt it wasn't worth my time. Uh, and on the right, we have still what I feel holds up pretty well is the 1989 NECA Keaton Batman. This was my favorite figure for the longest. I still like it better than these figures because this is an actual 89 figure. Uh, I'm curious to see what McFarlane's going to pump out in the near future, but here's a few different scales just for uh, comparison's sake. Before we wrap up here with some final thoughts on both of these figures, if you guys haven't already, please make sure to do me a favor. Hit that like and subscribe button down below. 
For you guys new to the channel, I generally do a lot of wrestling action figure reviews, mainly WWE and AW Jazzwares. I do want to expand and do other figure lines as well from Marvel Legends to uh, McFarlane. Uh, and kind of, you know, this is kind of a testing phase. So if you guys do like these reviews, I will pump out more for sure. Uh, again, I'm very passionate on, about all action figures. I collect multiple different lines, so I am happy to bring that to you here. Make sure to turn on those notification bells and stay tuned to my channel for the latest and greatest reviews uh, coming up real soon. As far as these two figures go, listen, I absolutely love them. I was so pumped to get them, and I don't feel like they disappointed at all. I love the articulation. The accessories are perfect. I mean, McFarlane, for the most part, has been known, been a little stingy on their accessories. You get a set of interchangeable hands, a grappling gun, and a battering. Like, what more could you want? I mean... Listen, the, the head scans, I feel like, what a lot of people are sticking to. This is a $20 figure. I mean, you can't really complain for what you're getting here. Uh, McFarlane is definitely the best company right now today, if you ask me, giving you a bang for the buck for the most part. Listen, I know there are more premium lines. Uh, like WWE Mattel Ultimate Editions are $32. Marvel Legends are like $27.99, so maybe even more with those deluxe series or uh, whatever what you have. But these figures are great. I, I would highly recommend them, especially if you are an 89 Batman fan. Again, we're going to be getting more. These will look awesome displayed on your shelf, and I cannot wait to get that Batmobile in hand uh, to see how these figures stack up. Again, I did get mine at Target, but they are supposed to be hitting Macy's. They're hitting uh, Amazon real soon, hopefully this week. So if you guys missed out, I I'm sure these will be plentiful for sure. Uh, so just be patient. And uh, again, if you see them, I highly recommend I would grab them. But anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video review. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at AlexWestCollects. I will catch you all on the next one.